Hi, Larry Mack here. We're speaking with Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick. They got a new album coming out on Friday, April 9th called In Another World. And Rick, we've been playing the new song called Light Up the Fire on the Station. I heard the album yesterday. I absolutely love the album. Um, it's probably going to be one of my favorite albums of this year. Um, oh. I've been telling people, if you love Cheap Trick, you're going to love this album. If you like Cheap Trick, you're going to love this album. If you've never heard of them, you're going to love this album. It's really, really good. Well, that's uh, that's good. You know, <laughs> can I say? You know, we try to make good. Rec we make records for ourselves to tell you the truth. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that uh, we we're still around making records. So, can you tell me a little bit about the meaning behind the brand new song, the one we've been playing, um, "Light Up the Fire"? Uh, I think the urgency of what's been going on the past few years. I think. You know, get 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 the good stuff going here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I think. I haven't heard the song yet. Just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, uh, actually, I cut my finger yesterday. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, ouch! It's like every time I try to go play, I forget that I got the cut, and it's like, ow! What am I doing? Uh, how did you cut it? <laughs> well, uh, I've got uh, four kids, and so. On uh, Wednesdays, I have to take the garbage out because they don't do it. Well, mm -hmm. wait a minute, they don't live here anymore either. But uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I took it down and it's like, it's so cold here, it was like zero degrees. And a, a bottle fell out of one of the cans. Mm -hmm. And I, I reached down to get it. It's like, ah, I stabbed myself, but it was so cold. My blood, it didn't start bleeding. And then so you came back in the house and warmed up. Then I came back in the house. Oh, and then it bled like crazy. Oh man. Well, I hope that heals up pretty quickly there. Well, for there, you. there, it just uh I just oh, yeah. popped it, popped it again. Ouch. Yeah. Oh. So okay, well, that has nothing to do with the record. Yeah, so we were we were talking about the new song Light Up the Fire. So is it kind of like your ode to try to get things back moving and let's get over this and get life going again? Yeah, yeah. You know, the uh, two and a half minutes of uh of pure uh, cheap trick noise. Now, this is your 20th studio album in, in like almost 50 years, you know, and I know a lot of bands that have been around a, a while kind of like rest on their laurels in a way and just kind of go and do the touring and just rely on their old hits. But you guys just keep putting out new music. Uh, I think this is like your third album in like four years. Um, is it you got so much to say? <laughs> Well, uh, well, you, you asked me to interpret the last one. I didn't have much to say, but uh, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, we still have songs in us, and you know, it's like sometimes we pay just pay, you know, for our make the records ourselves. We've done that before, you know, not not depending on a record label, but then we just do it because we like it. And it's like some sometimes they hit, and sometimes they don't. But that's that's been our whole career. So what, what, what's the song process like? I mean, is it any different, you know, putting this together in a pandemic? Or I understand that you wrote so, some of these songs came out a couple of years ago and then you changed some, one of the titles. Did, yeah. One. yeah, but what's the process like now for you guys um, dealing with a pandemic? Do you all live in the same city still or in different uh, No, we don't. Oh, uh, Robin lives in Florida, Tom lives in Nashville, and Dax and I live here in Illinois. So it's like... Uh, when we get together, we, you know, that's what we do. You know, when, if we go in to record, you know, we usually have the basics ideas of what we're doing, but uh, then we flush them out while we're in the studio. And it's, it's kind of good because uh, it's, since we play live, we don't, uh, we don't go with just drums and, you know, one at a time. And we get the feel for the stuff. And sometimes uh, like, like there's uh, two songs on the, on the record uh, two different versions of the same song. One's mm -hmm. a kind of a slowish version. The yeah, other's kind of a, uh, a a Ramones kind of version. And and it's the same song. It's like, oh, if you, if I didn't tell you or you didn't see the song title, you uh, you might not even notice. Well, like one of the songs you put out a couple of years ago, and it was um, I, I want to say it was the summer the summer song. You have two different titles for it. A couple of years ago, it was called something different. Why the name change on the album? Um, I think here comes the summer. Yes. I, th I think that's what, uh, or, or the other one, I think was the summer looks good on you. Mm -hmm. Something like that. It's like, well, powers the bee said there's a better title. for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's, I know what it is. I you know, if I see it, uh, um, on a set list for a show, Oh, that song. Okay. 
So that, if, they that, gave, that if, if they gave us the new title, it was like, what is that? We don't do that one. So, so that decision was kind of made for you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess without thinking, you know, it's like we had about 20 different names uh, for the album too. So it's like, oh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, that's what it is now. So how do you come up with the name of an album? I mean, obviously there's a song on there uh, called that, but I, I, or at least get the lyrics in there. How, how do you come up with the name of the album? I mean, that's something that sticks with the band for a long time once you put it out. Yeah, well, the first record uh, was called Cheap Trick. We had side A and side one. True. And uh, then uh, about their fourth record, uh, Dream Police. Now, that was a good title, with, you know, a good concept. But not every album has something that, that's uh, that obvious. So, you know, we just fumble around. And uh, we always try to think of something funny at least funny to ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. Well, the new we, album is out, uh, what, April 9th? Uh, yes. And uh, there's going to be some different versions of it, deluxe versions and stuff like that. Yeah, it could be. It's like, uh, yeah, there are, you know, vinyl versions, this version, that version. Uh, a few years ago, we had the, we had the number one eight track in the, in the world. Of course, not many other people put out eight tracks, but do they even still make so, it? Well, they did. <laughs> and and um, yeah, I think it's cool that they, they do that, you know, because now with streaming and and everybody doing that, it's like I prefer uh, albums uh, or both versions, digital and, and vinyl, you know, because uh, I like to read who did what. Mm -hmm. uh, I always like to knowing who the engineer was or where they were they recorded or uh, is there are there other players on there well, the, well, yeah well speaking of that like who are the players on this like the producer where did you guys record this i, I read something about nashville um, or, or did you kind of do it virtually like a lot of bands are doing it now because of the pandemic well uh no we did most of it uh, most of it in nashville i did some guitar overdubs in uh, rockford illinois and we sent the stems here and you just do i went and did my solos because i I didn't want to have to go back down there to do what I was going to do. So, well, I had good basic tracks to play too. And uh, one of the songs I've never played, I don't even know the chords because it, it was all Robin. Oh, wow. So it goes, I think it is. Okay. Oh. Oh, did... oh I couldn't tell if I lost you for a second there. Yes, you did. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I lost myself. Oh, no problem. So uh, the process of writing the album, uh, do you, is it one person mainly responsible for the lyrics and somebody else does the guitar or somebody do, does the bulk of it or is it a shared experience between all the band no, members? No, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, a, a band effort. Usually it's either Robin or me or Tom or usually that writes the lyrics. Um, and, you know, like I'll, when I write a song, it's like I'll usually write too much. And... Um, so then uh, we decide what we're gonna use and what we're not gonna use. And sometimes it's like, uh, I'll go uh, phonetically too. It's like uh, like Van Morrison just doing that. Moon and June and June and soon, uh, you know, okay, yeah. Whether it makes any sense or not, but the, it, it sounds right. Okay. And, uh, but I think, you know, they all have some hidden meaning like uh, what, like, oh, we're cheap trick, doesn't matter what we say. Well, you know, when I was listening yesterday, you guys, you released this record a couple of years ago too, the John Lennon cover of Give Me Some Truth. Yeah. You put that on the record. It, was there a reason you picked that record? Was it have something to do with what's going on in the world today? Or is it just a song that you guys like? I know you're a big Beatles fan. and Or is it, was there a meaning behind it? Uh, yeah, all of the above, what you just said. Okay. Yeah, we were a little, uh, yeah, things are screwed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're still a bit screwed up. And it's like, you know, if you can't handle the truth, you know, I, uh, Rick, you're, you're not good looking. Got that. You know, I can handle that. But if, you know, if you say I'm beautiful, whoa, who is this crazy nut? And I think there was a lot of uh, falsehoods going around. I don't know. But that was just a great song because uh, I work with John Lennon on Devil Fantasy. And uh, we always like John Lennon. We always... <laughs> Even if it wasn't a John Lennon song when we played live, we we had a, a, a TX uh, 
3340 that we use the John Lennon slap on. Mm -hmm. if you, if you, you know, the echo he uses on his voice. Mm -hmm. I never, that's the first time I ever mentioned that, but big oh, cool. deal. Well, you look like a smart guy, unless my, is your camera working? No, my camera's probably broken. I'm, I'm really kind of dumb, but hey. <laughs> yeah, I have the voice for radio and the face for the radio. That, 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 that's me, exactly. That, when they put this whole Zoom thing together, I'm like, really? I got to be on a video? That's oh, why I got God. the radio, so I didn't have to be seen. I got to take a shower and everything. <laughs> exactly. Not in the old days. So, um. One of my favorite songs of the new record. I, I absolutely love that song. So it goes. It's just I kept listening. I kept hitting play again and again and again on that song. Um, I don't know if you guys have plans to make that a single down the road, but I love it. What's the meaning behind it? Uh, like like all the stuff, like all the stuff we do, it's uh, just observations of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and it depends on who's who finishes the lyrics. So that's that's probably Robin. Who finishes the lyrics? So sometimes you have, yeah. like, where you bring a song in and then they tweak it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, we do it as a band. I used to write 100 percent of the stuff, and uh, you know, but everybody's a pretty good writer. You know, it's like, you know, it's like I had to go back and learn all this stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> it'd been so long since we did it, I couldn't remember. You know, but it took me an instant because it's a cheap trick. I, we kind of fall into what we do anyhow. And we only use uh, C, A, and D, and E. <laughs> so it's easy to find my way around. Well, you guys usually, you're, you're, you're road warriors. I mean, you're constantly on the road. I can probably, I, I was going through my ticket stubs, uh, you know, as far back as when they stopped making ticket stubs. But I, I must have seen you guys <laughs> at least 15, 20 times over the years. In fact, you were one of my first concerts uh, back in the early 80s when I was in high school. Um, it's, it's one of those things where did you guys do a lot of the writing on the road or uh, in between? Because every time I hear it, you guys were on tour. And of course, this year, things changed a lot for bands. And, and uh... Yeah, well, we wrote most of it uh, the year before and uh, recorded it and then waited to release it and then waited to release it, then waited to release it. And still we're waiting to release it. In the meantime, we did, uh, uh, you know, the... Uh, Give me some truth. We did also did um, uh, see, I'm thinking. Let me. Uh, we did a song, a, a Be another Beatles song for uh, uh, for Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. uh, we did David Bowie, uh, Rebel Rebel. I don't know what we did that for, but it was you know, did a good version of it. And also we also we did a, a Harry Nielsen. Uh, tribute song. Oh, you so do? that's besides uh, you know besides the record that's coming out now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so you know we we kept busy. You know it's like we like to we like to do it, and it's like like I said, it's never it's usually not uh, a big incentive to go out and do it. Like you know nobody's clamoring for a cheap trick record, except you and me mm -hmm. and um, two smartest guys on this universe. Um, so. You know, we just keep busy, and it's like uh, some sometimes we have hits, and sometimes we don't. You know, like when we did the Christmas record, somebody said, "You want to do a Christmas record?" And because uh, they didn't want all the schmaltzy stuff, and so we we dug around. We found, you know, did stuff by Slade, and we did stuff by Chuck Berry, Chuck Berry, and uh, we did stuff by what else did we do? You know, the Kinks, mm -hmm. and and, and the, you know, just we kept busy. We probably did make it cheap trick ish well you know speaking of that cheap trick ish like when you hear your music you know it's cheap trick like there's a lot of bands out there i i, I they kind of all get lost because they all have a similar sound like i couldn't tell you who they are from the next band that has a similar sound but when i hear cheap trick i can definitely hear your influences but i know it's cheap trick and you guys have been one of those bands that can ride that wave of being a heavy band and a pop band and somehow pull it off where there's a lot of bands out there that they got to be one or the other is this something that you guys designed or, you know? Well, I think this uh, songs influence us as much as anything. And let's like, even when we're recording, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the song tells me what kind of solo or if we're going to put a solo, you know, it's like, I, you know, I've never been a, a studio kind of musician, although I've done studio work, but it's like, 
uh, I'm not good at copying somebody else. Or, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, I taught myself how to play, and guess what? Uh, sorry for what you get, you know. Well, you've done pretty good with it, right? So. Yeah, well, I, you know, it's like, uh, I, but I don't go. All right, here, here, let's be like Pete Townsend. Let's do, do like, let's do this like Jeff Beck or what? You know, I do what I do. I go by what the song says. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, so I don't have any set pattern. I mean, if we made uh, twenty studio albums. You think how many songs that is, and then you think it's like how many solos have I done? It's like you know they're they're not quite all the same. Some are melodic, some are go along with the actual melody, and some are just way off in outer space. Hey, yeah, how long have you guys been off the road now? Have you guys been off the road since March when all this happened? Or did, yeah, one year. Been, we, since... Yeah, we were taking time off right then because we'd been working our tails off making the record and being on tour uh, all over the <laughs> all over the world and so we we're gonna have to take a month off and during it, that during that time uh, Robin was going with Alice Cooper to Europe to do some uh, playing with an orchestra in, G in Germany and whatever mm -hmm. he only got two two uh, shows off before that tanked and in the meantime I had a month off and so I started a band the Nielsen Trust Mm. So my son Miles Nielsen and Dax Nielsen and Miles's wife Kelly, and, and and we went out. We had we booked seventeen shows, something like that. We got did two sellouts. It's a lot of fun, oh. two and a half hour shows, and then we got the rug pulled out from under us. So, what do you do to keep yourself busy now? Because you guys are one of the busiest bands out there, constantly either road on the road or uh, touring, and it sounds like a month is pretty much the average break you would take before you got back on the road again a year that's a long time are you getting stir crazy uh, i was kind of stir crazy in the first place so it's like yeah um, it, it's, it's kind of it was it's been interesting it hasn't been uh, inspiring but it's been interesting it's been interesting it, yeah um, you know i actually met my grandkids you know i knew them but it's like but i actually you know found out that my one grandson uh he 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 only eats uh, chicken McNuggets. So, and we were together for about five days, and he ate a hundred of them. You know? <laughs> so, like, is that good for him? It's like, well, I kind of bonded over that. I didn't eat one of them, but uh, you know, like, and then you know, found out this. My one granddaughter, she's going to be uh, trying out for uh, uh, medical school. And, you know, like, and I have another one that's, uh, he has a, his own website that uh, he does, he draws uh, anime and stuff like that. And, you know, like, I just had fun with them. I don't like my own kids, but my grandkids are great. <laughs> so you've had a chance to reconnect with your family a bit. Yeah. You were normally able to. Yeah. And it, it's been good. I didn't want to kill my wife any more than u usual. Or, or the opposite. She didn't want to kill you. Oh, well, you. yeah. Well, I, you better ask her. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> She's out of town. So is there any plans now that the album's coming out on April 9th? Any plans? I mean, is it even feasible to say you have any plans for a tour? Are you going to go back on the road? You're going to do a tour with ZZ Top. Is that still on? That's, or you that's, waiting? Still on that's still on later in the year, and so is Rod Stewart. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, we're going to uh, Australia in April. Oh, okay. In May. And we have to quarantine for two weeks there before we go and before we can play. It's, it's, uh, we're doing it with uh, Stone Temple Pilots and uh, Blur, I think. Oh, okay. Bunch of difference, you know. And I, I've been doing interviews with the Australians, like they're so excited to have live music too. Oh, <laughs> I miss live music, you know. It's, 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 <laughs> what do you think? I think, like, oh, yeah, it's <laughs> just, a totally just, different experience for you, Rick. <laughs> I just love to watch it. You get to, uh, you get to play it. Yeah, I, I better practice it too. I mean, listen. no, I, I just enjoy playing. It's like uh, the travel kind of blows. Ever since nine eleven, you know, I used to get searched about three times at every airport. You know, because I look kind of shady. I know that, but it's like but now that's gone away. But it's still the travel that takes way more time than it does playing. But when I get to play, that's like a song on our first album. Daddy should have stayed in high school. I'm 30, but I feel like 16 until I look in a mirror. 
Uh, I know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> I've, re I've removed all the mirrors in my house. I've, I've come close to that, except when I do these Zoom calls and I have to stare at my face right back at me here. So I got an idea. Get one of those cardboard things. Oh, put that up. Yeah, there you go. That's a great idea. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited. I, I should do that too, of course. Oh, no, no, Rick. Yeah, I, right. I, I've been a big fan of yours for a long, long time. Uh, I, one of the first concerts I ever saw you uh, playing at the Arizona State Fair and you threw your guitar out into the crowd and security tried to tackle the guy and you said, stop, stop, stop. And I think it was a Halloween show. And then you said, Merry Christmas. And you gave the guy the guitar. And uh, I was 15 years old at the time went, man, this band is cool. And I've been a fan ever since. That's the reason you've been to 15 or 30 shows. So you maybe get a guitar. Yeah. Well, I still, I'm still waiting for it, Rick, but Hey, you know, what? yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the mail. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wait for that. Was that, was, was that, was uh, Roy Wood played with us? He I'm came sorry? up on stage and played Roy Wood. I, you know, it was 1981 or 82. I'm trying to so remember. That'd be around that time. Yeah. Uh, Roy Wood from the move and, uh, electric light orchestra and it's helped start it with jeff lynn yeah it might have been that big, show yeah he we first some reason he was there i don't know why and he came up that's how i remember that show uh-huh yeah i remember that one uh, very well it was halloween and it was a great show and it was part of the state fair up in phoenix and uh been a fan i think i i can't even count how many times i've seen you guys i, I found some ticket stubs where i'm like oh i saw them there saw them here <laughs> When did I see them in California? Oh, oh, wow. So yeah, just, I can't wait to see you guys live again. Hopefully the touring will start in the States here sometime in the late, later part of this year. I know that That'd they have wonderful. it. Yeah. It looks like they have it pretty under control in, in Australia. So hopefully yeah. we can get in under control here and then we can enjoy live music and camaraderie again. Yeah, well, we're not there yet, but uh, I think so. Well, cool. I'm excited for the new album. It's called In Another World. Uh, the new song is called Light Up the Fire. You can hear it here on 96.1 KLPX. And uh, you can get it in the stores April 9th or stream. It's going to be on all the platforms. Yeah. Okay. That's what I've heard. Well, cool. Well, I'm shows looking you, forward to it. Shows you what I know. So, so, Rick, you mentioned something really quick before we go. You mentioned your other, your little side project you put together. Uh -huh. Are you going to uh, continue to do that again? And what type of music does uh, that band play compared to Cheap Trick? Uh, well, a lot of Cheap Trick songs. Okay. <laughs> That's the stuff I know. And uh, my son, he has his, uh, his own band called Miles Nielsen and the Rusted Hearts, where they play all over. They're great players. And it's like uh, Kelly, she's, uh, she's a Ford model and sings real good. So oh, great. it's like, so easy on the eyes, easy on the ears. And we, we do a lot of cheap trick stuff, um, usually deeper cuts, mm -hmm. but, but you know, a few of the, the inner things. Like I said, the, the first two shows we did were sold out, two yeah. and a half hours of, of stuff. And we told stories, like, you know, tell stories about, well, these guys came over to my house, you know, I remember Guns N' Roses, I remember, I remember you know, my kids, he said they were, I, they never told me when they were, people were there, but they were like, wow, my God, now I know, oh, that's what my dad, you know, they, you know, they knew what I did, but it's like, they never put the two and two together because they grew up with uh, Gene Simmons staying in my house, uh, Todd Runner staying in my house. Heart coming over, Aerosmith over a couple times, Guns N' Roses, Alabama, <laughs> you know, we had a bunch of different people that had been over. And it's like, oh, that's what, you know, it's like, what do you tell, what do your kids think when you're in their grade school or high school? Yeah, my dad playing a rock band. Oh, good, you know. <laughs> you know, your old man, holy hell, he's way too old to be in a rock band. Well, that's got to be interesting because, so did it take them a while to really understand what you did? Well, I want them to pay me back for being so kind to them, living with me. No, I don't. I don't even. I don't even think about it. To tell you the truth. Well, Rick, I appreciate you taking time on a snow. It looks like a very cold day where you're at right now. I don't know if you can see it, but there's about three, three and a half feet of snow out here. Well, I will not. Uh, well, okay, it's going to be eighty degrees here on Saturday. Oh, shut up! <laughs> shut up! All right, I gotta go. All right, Rick. Thank you so much. I look forward to the new album being out. I look even more forward to seeing you guys hopefully live on stage in concert sometime in the next few months. Sounds good to me. All right. Take care, Rick. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.